sectarianism is just like a cactus. It's a mentality which doesn't allow anybody to get close. Because in a sectarian mentality, you're always defensive. You're always afraid that somebody may imagine that there is a possibility that there is any validity somewhere else or that you are not the highest and the best and supreme. A cactus stings to every direction. You can't touch him. Like here we have a few behind me. If anybody wants to get closer, he better be careful because they got some tough stingers. You can almost kill somebody. Sectarian people, they, they are not afraid of burning the faith of others. Some people call them Shraddha Shredders. They take another person's faith and they say, Oh, what you think about God is worthless. What you are trying to do for God is worthless. The only one and the only place you can be saved is with me in my institution and in whatever. This type of sectarian mentality is a disturbance. It's not the preaching of the Vedas. You see the Vedas? They have a clear teaching about the truths, that the truths manifest. Like my spiritual master, he once said on uh, an appearance day of his guru, he said, we are not coming here to celebrate the appearance day of an individual, of a particular person, to have like a family feast. No, we are celebrating here Guru Tattva, the manifestation of the Supreme Lord, who comes once and again to save me and you and everyone. He manifests in this world to save us, to, to give us guidance to the spiritual world when we are sincere enough. He makes this arrangement. So sectarianism is like uh, ignorant to that fact and tries to put it in such a way as the saving grace of God only comes down through him in his particular way and that everybody ought to obey to that. And thus, uh, you see there, it's, it's an offense to preach against the face of somebody else, to disturb the face of somebody else, to make them think that there's no validity in what they're doing if they're sincerely trying to serve God. You see, uh, that when you, there's a very important shloka in the scripture, it says, Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatra Vidingvida. I can't take a rare bhaktiya utpata chaiva kalpati. It says that uh, when you preach any conclusions, any type of, uh, of philosophy which is not backed up by the Shruti, the Smriti, and the Puranas, then your preaching, supposed to be so called preaching, is just a disturbance to society. Then people will not like each other, people will not trust each other, people will fear each other. It's very, very immature. It's like the Kanishta Madhyam and Uttama Adhika. You know, Uttama Adhika is the highest one. He sees everybody as a devotee and except himself. The Madhyam Adhikari, he, he distinguishes. He says, yes, there are some people inimical. But everybody who chants Hare Krishna and is initiated, he has highest regard for him. But if somebody is very much against uh, the Vaishnavas, then he will take some distance from him. And then there's the Kanishta Arikari. The Kanishta Arikari thinks only me and my mission, we are the real Vaishnavas. Everybody else is questionable or bad or whatever. So this type of sectarianism, this cactus consciousness, is really a very, very disturbing thing. If you ever meet somebody like this, just stay away from him. Like one time, my Sanya's guru, Srila Sridhar he said, if somebody thinks I am or I have, then we should offer our respect to him from a safe distance. Because those who really have, they think they don't have. 
So sectarianism is not appropriate. It's not a representation of what uh, our spiritual masters came to teach. Sectarianism is something, it's coming out of uh, uh, selfishness or fear, insecurity or, or whatever other strange motivation. Maybe there's some hidden agenda on the person. Then they, then they behave like that. Because if somebody actually has uh, a true access and connection with the truth, he's kind and accommodating and he makes everybody feel very joyful, especially amongst the Vaishnavas who are, we are following such a wonderful lifestyle. And when we see somebody else living the same lifestyle but a little different, we should anyhow be very joyous about it, you know. But when you hear somebody, oh no, our institution will take you home back to God. Other institutions, please be, uh, uh, be careful. They will not do you any good or, or we, we, we find duality. You know, in this world, there's a lot of minimization going on. And you see, you have to understand the absolute and the relative. That's always an element in the world of faith. It is there. Like I give you an example. There's many people in the world. They will not believe that God exists. But still they think they know what's right and they are very convinced about that. Then others, they will say, yes, we believe in God, but he is called Je Jehovah. And everybody else who you call God is a demon. Don't pay attention to him. So they, there's those people. Then there's other people, they say, no, God is Krishna. I believe it. And he has many names and like that. I, I believe that God is very great, but I don't believe in his incarnations such as uh, Lord Chaitanya. So then they minimize him. They they make a, a relativization. They say, Krishna, yes, Chaitanya, no. So this type of mentality, then others, they will say, yes, Chaitanya also, I accept them, but Bhaktivinoda Thakur as the great uh, uh, propounder or grandfather of the Krishna movement in the whole world nowadays, they will say, no, he's not so important. We, we, we want to serve God, but without him. And others, they will say, oh, yes, uh, Krishna is very nice, but without, uh, without Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, or without this one, or without that one. This type of relative, when, you re when people relativize the absolute to package it for their sectarian understanding, this is actually not very broad-minded. It's actually not the truth because finally nobody knows who Krishna will pick. Who can claim you have to be one to know one? That's the famous saying. So if you really want to say that he is or he isn't, that means you think you are. And that's not Vaishnava mentality. The Vaishnava, you don't think he is. So he's not very eager to, to criticize and point and say, he'll say no, whatever Krishna arranges, this is fine. So nowadays, like for example, the movement has gone west. There's Vaishnavas all over the world. And there's uh, there's even the the, the the, the limitations of caste consciousness have come into question when my Guru Deva gave sannyas to Western body devotees and brought them to India, and some of them even became spiritual masters. So that's a great shocking experience. And some people say, no, 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 the Guru must be born in India, otherwise it cannot be the, the truth, it cannot be the full manifestation of the grace. But that's not what the scriptures say. They say, Kiba Vipra Kiba Nyasi, Sudha Kedanai, say Krishna Tatvavit, say Guru Hai. That whoever is born in a high Brahmin family and he doesn't know the philosophy of Krishna, he cannot be a spiritual master. If somebody is born in a, in a Sudra or in a dog eating family, if they know the science of Krishna and serve the essence of it, then he can even become a spiritual master. So this is what our scriptures say. <clears throat> but you know, one thing is a theory and one thing is to, to live it, to, to have it really put out in practice. So unfortunately we see many neophytes, especially there's this mentality, my country is better than your country, uh, we should control everything. There's so many hidden agendas, even amongst those who try to live spiritual life. So we have to be very cautious that we will be properly guided, that we have to stay away from those cactus mentalities and we have to find out where is the soft grass, where is the, where is the, uh, there's, where's the kindness, where is the Tulasi's grace, you know, Tulasi graces everybody. 
everybody chanting on the Tulasi beads, everybody ha having the, the Kanti uh, beads. Uh, by the grace of Tulasi, we are all worshipping Tulasi. So, so there, where's that kindness? Where's that softness? That softness which, which will bring us closer to each other and understand each other better and have more gratefulness to all of our acharyas and more compassion for all the practitioners. This is a very important thing. So, uh, therefore, my spiritual master, he was always eager to encourage everybody else. He was very, very eager. He actually had envisioned to start uh, um, the League of Devotees. That's how he started. And later he invited all his god brothers to take part in the Bhaktivedanta Institute, in the Bhaktivedanta Charity Trust, and many things he did. And he, he, he even requested us, his disciples, help all the Godias to come together to work together for that one beautiful goal of Lord Chaitanya without losing the individual identity. Because for a disciple, his guru is the most important. That's a fact. And he he should be faithful to his guru, but he should not discourage anybody else in his face. And he should not, in the name of my guru is the greatest, become a disturbance anywhere or for anyone. And that's what we have to learn. This is the, this is the up-to-date information for now, for tomorrow, and for all times to come. Because the mentality that I'm better and my people are better than yours, that will always be there in the neophyte consciousness. Thank you very much, and please don't take offense. I offer these few words to the pleasure and to the cooperation of all Vaishnavas in this world. Vishwa Vaishnava Raj Shabaki Jai. Thank you.